What's going on, Gator Country? Tennessee's coming in this week, which means the start of SEC action. For GCTV, I'm Nick Delatore here with Richard Johnson. And uh, we're going to do a little preview today for the game tomorrow. Florida opens up action against Tennessee uh, with the Vols coming into town. New coaching staff, new quarterback. We don't know who the quarterback is, but they're going to have a new one. Uh, what do you expect to see tomorrow here on Florida Field? You know, I think it's going to be one of those ugly-looking 23-24-10 Florida football games, to be honest with you. You know, Tennessee is coming in here. They're planning on naming their starting quarterback during pregame warm-ups. You know, that's what we're dealing with today, uh, uh, tomorrow in the Swamp. And so I, I just think that Tennessee is not ready. I, you know, they're not ready for Florida. I don't think that they're good enough to really compete with Florida for the full 60. Uh, you know, the quarterback situation, whether it's Bush Jones kind of window dressing to keep his team, you know, fresh and, and competitive, or it's really a big deal, I just don't think this is the game you go into with quarterback uncertainty. Yeah, the thing is that you have a guy like Tyler Bray and you have a certain offensive style, kind of a pro set, attack you down the field with Bray's big arm. Bray's gone, you get a new coach in, that coach wants to bring an up tempo. They don't really have the pieces for that kind of offense right now. So you're seeing you're seeing Tennessee struggle. They've got uh, the, the seventh-ranked offensive uh, scoring offense in the SEC, which isn't bad. But Tennessee has the worst passing defense in the SEC, taking Florida's spot from the past two years. So Tennessee's really struggling throwing the ball. And with the fourth-ranked rushing offense, you kind of expect them to be able to run behind that massive offensive line. Yeah, the offensive line is without a doubt the strength of this Tennessee team, and they will play very well on Saturday, but I think that it's going to come in a situation where I think Florida is going to be very aggressive Saturday, and they're going to blitz a lot, because especially if it's not uh, Justin Worley, if they go with somebody else who hasn't started a game yet, I think Florida is, is really going to attack and really going to stack the box and make whoever is under center beat them through the air. And so I think that, you know, they're, Florida's going to bring more than Tennessee can block at times, and I think that it's it's just going to make it uh, a tough day at the office for whoever's under center. Right. Now getting into Florida's defense, going to be going up against that untested Tennessee offense. Florida's got, uh, it's been talked about a lot, the number one defense on third down in, uh, getting, in getting the other team off the field, and the number three rush defense in the country. So where Tennessee's strength is and where Tennessee can't hang in the game by controlling the clock and trying to do some of the things that Florida wants to do, that's really Florida's strength as well. So Tennessee, if they think that they can come in here and eat up 40, 40 minutes of the clock, control the ball on the ground. That's not something Florida's been letting anybody do, and I don't think that's something Florida's going to let Tennessee do on Saturday. Uh, offensively for Florida, you really need to see a little more out of Jeff Driscoll. He's got to stop turning the ball over. That's been something that has really been touched on during the bye week and then preparing for this week. You can't turn the ball over. You definitely can't turn the ball over in the red zone like they did against Miami and expect to win games. Uh, for Florida, to win this week, all they really need to do is play their game, don't turn the ball over, and don't make those silly mistakes that they did against Miami that ended up costing them a win. Look, Jeff Driscoll's lost three games as a starting quarterback, and each of the three games he's thrown two picks. The formula is simple. Take care of the ball. You know, Will Muschamp has been saying about that Miami game, if they end every drive with a kick, they win the game. Yeah. And, and it's true. You know, if you are kicking a field goal at the end of the four drives in the red zone that petered out into either a turnover or a turnover on downs, you're in good shape against Miami. You outgain them by 200 yards. If you hand me that Miami stat sheet after that game and you white out the turnover numbers, I tell you Florida won the game. If but Florida, turnovers are the equalizer. If Florida would have just kicked a field goal on first down every time they got into the red zone against Miami, they would have won the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, got to protect the ball. Uh, moving into, let's do a little uh, who has the advantage. We did this uh, with Vince Ferreira of, uh, with the Vols this week for our Behind Enemy Lions series. But when Tennessee runs the ball, who are you giving the advantage here? When Tennessee runs the ball, I, I want to give Tennessee that advantage because they're so good. But I think Florida is really going to sell out against the run right. and make Tennessee beat them via pass because yeah. we're not sure if they can do that. Right. And so I think, you know, you got to get Florida to the edge there. Yeah, this is kind of two teams who are – going to try to do the same thing offensively. Both teams are going to try to run the ball effectively. Both teams aren't very confident in what they're getting from their quarterback as far as passing. So I think Florida is better at doing that. I think Florida's defense is better at stopping the run. And I think Florida definitely has an advantage when Tennessee's running the ball. Uh, when Tennessee's passing the ball, you have to give this advantage to Florida. Florida's got 
two, probably three NFL cornerbacks on this team in the secondary right now. And like you said earlier, we don't even know who the quarterback is going to be. It's either going to be a freshman or a kid in Worley who has kind of played like a freshman since he's been there. What about you? What do you think? Who has the advantage when Tennessee's passing? It's got to be Florida. You know, if you got indecision at quarterback, whether it's fake to try and motivate this team or whether it's real, I don't, you know, and if it's fake uh, indecisiveness with quarterback, Justin Worley, the guy you got, isn't that great anyway. And I think that Florida is going to play well against the pass. You know, Bush Jones uh, said that he's talked to people that say there's eight out of 11 Florida defensive starters that can go to the NFL. You know, this is a very talented defense, and I think that they are, are going to do very well against a Tennessee passing offense that's as inept and anemic as Florida. What about when Florida runs the ball? That's their strength. That's what they want to try to do. Who has the advantage when Florida's on offense running the football? You know, Nick, I don't know. I, I, I kind of want to give this to Tennessee because Florida, I, I, I want to give it to Tennessee because I haven't seen it from Florida yet, and you didn't see it against Miami. You know, you, you didn't see them at their full potential against Miami, a team that on paper, I guess, they Florida should have been able to push around really up front, and they weren't able to do that. Right. And so, you know, Tennessee's got really good linebackers, uh, and, and I think that it's going to be interesting uh, to where, to, to when Florida runs the ball. So I think, I think I'll give Tennessee an advantage in that slight, slight uh, category. Okay. I'm going to disagree. Um, I think, I don't know if I should be buying into it, but I'm buying into that Matt Jones wasn't 100%. Took him a little while to knock the rust off. I think Matt Jones is going to be better. I think getting John Jalapio back uh, is going to be is going to really help that that communication as far as picking up things. And John Jalapio is the, probably the best run blocker Florida has. That's true, Nick. But with run blocking and, and, and that, with blocking in general, you are using your pectoral muscle. And John Halapio told us yesterday that he's not sure it, how it's going to hold up. You know, it's not fully, fully healed. It could come off, you know, really in any moment. So, and of course, him coming back, not getting game reps, not being up to game speed, there will be missed assignments from John Halapio. As bright, as intelligent of a lineman as he is, there will be missed assignments from John Halapio on Saturday. Of that, I really don't think you can doubt. Uh, you know, there'll be missed assignments from everybody because nobody's perfect. But I think that him trying to get back in the swing of things will cause a few missteps uh, in, the, in blocking in general, but especially run blocking, obviously, because that's what Florida wants to do. Well, he's going with Tennessee. I'm going with Florida. You tell us what you think. Uh, what about when Florida passes the ball? When Florida passes the ball, you know, you almost want to call it a push, to be honest with you. But I think as long as Jeff Driscoll doesn't turn the ball over and, and as long as he's okay in that regard, you know, he threw for a record number of attempts and yards against Miami. You know, the, the talent is there. It's a work in progress. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. Don't turn the ball over and take another stride in the passing game uh, and get closer to being good. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to give every team the advantage when Florida's passing the ball until we see Jeff Driscoll yeah. do it in the yeah. game. It's about we taking heard. strides. It's about, like you said, until Jeff Driscoll does it in the game. So take another stride on Saturday, and like you said, until uh, I'll give it a push. May I guess I'll give it to Tennessee just because I have to pick somebody. He tried to cheat and go with a push, but we're both going to go with Tennessee. Uh, let's get down, finish this up, wrap it up. What is your prediction for 3.30? Vern Lundquist, Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson's here. It's a big week, national game. What's your prediction Saturday? 21-10 slugfest. I mean, I, I I don't think I'm going to predict Florida to score more than 28 points all season, really. Um, and, and I think Tennessee gets a score, punches one in, uh, maybe gets a turnover and gets some advantageous field position. 21-10, 21-10. Uh, 21-10. I'm going to go with 24-17. It's going to be a little bit closer. I think Florida does still have some turnover issues. Tennessee scores on a short field. Um, I think Florida's going to be able to control the ball on offense for a little bit, but this is a Florida team that's not going to blow anybody out. I don't know what Vegas is thinking with the 17-point spread. Oh, yeah. uh, this Florida team's not going to blow anybody out, and uh, I think it'll be close, probably a little bit closer on the scoreboard than it actually was on the field, but uh, yeah. I think Florida ends up coming away with a win, moving on to two and one, and uh, looking next to uh, looking to move to Kentucky next week. For GCTV, I'm Nick Delatore, Richard Johnson. Stay classy, Gator Nation.